Good afternoon. Today we'd like to continue with the two previous videos we've made. The two videos which I'm going to discuss today is what is buprenorphine, a powerful recovery tool, and a second video we made that was does Suboxone help with pain. And I would like to continue with those and sort of mesh the two ideas. And what I would like to use today is a patient case example to really draw out what some of these issues are. Uh, my name is Dr. B and welcome to the show. I'm going to give you a case of a patient that I uh, managed earlier this week that really draws out not only the value of this medication, but what is wrong in the social medical paradigm and framework that we're utilizing these medications. Let me go ahead and start off about the patient. This is a 60 something year old male. Uh, he is retired, he was an executive from uh, a, a company that did really well. He's very healthy otherwise. He came from another state to visit me and the reason he came is as such. Uh, he's had a vascular def uh, 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 deformity for many, many, many years and about 10 to 15 years ago, as these things often do, this, this vascular deform deformity started to cause a lot of pain in his extremities. The short of it is that uh, otherwise he's healthy, he's robust, he's well-to-do, a uh, wonderful guy with his wife. And what has happened over the last 10 to 15 years is two things. One, multiple surgical and procedural interventions to relieve the pain. I think the number he gave me, and I could be wrong about this, about a half a million dollars worth, and none of them were successful. In fact, some may have made the pain worse. And the second thing that has happened is an escalating dose of opiate medication for the treatment of this pain. What has happened and what did happen is the usual course and the usual suspects. The medication continued to increase in its dosing. The culture and the attitudes towards prescribing pain medications changed and he was suddenly cut off or very limited in the dose that he was being prescribed. And that's tragic. And uh, his pain doctors really had no alternative way of relief, except we are now cutting the dose of this medication. In addition, keep in mind, as I pointed out in previous videos, if you use opiates chronically, you end up getting hyperalgesia. So if you're already a chronic pain patient that is not end of life, that is not terminal, uh, what opiates do is they relieve the pain. Your need for opiates goes up. At the same time, that pain gets worse. Even if you didn't have chronic pain and you started to use opiates on a regular basis, your pain threshold decreases as I've discussed in other videos. This is exactly what was happening with this gentleman and he was very miserable. He came into my office uh, with his wife and as I said, they traveled from out of state to see me. And uh, last conversation he had with one of his pain doctors was, uh, well, what can we do? And they didn't really have a solution. So he shows up and he was actually, with, uh, he had realized that, okay, I have a problem with opiates now because my doses have been escalating. I definitively take a lot more than what is prescribed. And so I have an addiction problem. And uh, so much of this can be discussed. I'm gonna leave a lot of this for the podcast uh, that is much longer, but I just wanna get to this case. He came in and partial withdrawals and his goal, idea, and uh, plan of intervention, his idea for me was that I'm going to do something uh, where it's gonna be opiate free, he has no alternative but to get off of opiates because these were just wrecking his quality of life and his pain was not being relieved and he was getting worse. And he was uh, you know, willing to pay a lot of money for a procedure, which I won't get into now, but an alternative procedure to treat his opiate addiction. And I asked the gentleman, well, what is your plan for the pain afterwards? He had no plan. And he was also withdrawing off the opiates because he was assuming we're gonna go an opiate-free route. And so he had to get off these opiates. And uh, what I did, the first thing a physician should do, I always tell people, I always tell my patients, a monkey can write you a prescription. I'd like you to think that I'm not a monkey, I'm a physician, I'm a professional who should educate you, inform you, guide you, and then together we make 
a decision that completely respects your autonomy, your values, and your worldview after I educate you about the truth, and I will facilitate you to the best that I can given my autonomy, my worldview, my values, and the fact that I have to, first of all, make sure I do you no harm. So I gave this gentleman his options, and uh, I discussed with him one of the things I discussed, and I said, have you ever thought about being on Suboxone maintenance for chronic pain? Because after all, this is a powerful pain medication, and this is what it was originally intended for. More his wife, and they're wonderful people, but more his wife than himself because he was looking for relief and I don't know if he was necessarily thinking clearly. I explained what this medication is, what it could potentially do for him and said, now the option is yours. I'm not going to do any sort of costly intervention for you that's going to leave you medication free because I don't think that's the route you should go. This is a situation where I feel Suboxone for chronic pain is a way for you to go. It's a much cheaper route than the alternative solutions that you've come to see me for. So you can rest assured I'm certainly not trying to take your money. Please consider it. His wife had some hesitation because again, there's so much social discourse uh, and, uh, and resistance to Suboxone. It just has a you know, really bad name and our cultural attitudes toward, towards this medication are unjustified. Uh, after I said, after about a day of deliberation uh, and considering alternative methods, and this poor guy was extremely miserable, I went ahead and I kept him in my uh, medical clinic. I went ahead and did an induction with Suboxone and got him started on Suboxone and told him, hey, why don't you stay in town the next two to three days? Let me get the dose correct. Let me see you afterwards and let me see how you're doing. Well, we did that. And let me tell you what happened on the last day before they left town. The gentleman came back into the office. <clears throat> I took care of him every day, kept in touch with him by phone. Uh, I think they came to the office to visit, if I recall correctly. On the third day, when they were leaving, he came into the office, completely new person that I had not seen. Now, uh, I can say, okay, when I first originally saw him, he was withdrawing from the opiates. But by his own account, by his own accord, he said, in you know, he almost had tears in his eyes and he said, 15 years I've been to so many doctors, so many pain doctors. I've had multiple procedures done. I have never felt this good and I'm a little bit angry. You know, and he was very grateful and uh, you know, uh, I think he had a hard time grasping that we actually charged him much less than any alternative that I would have done. And that was the discussion. He was kind of a little bit in shock. Why didn't a single one of his doctors offer this treatment for him? His pain was extensively relieved. I mean, he was really on a high and uh, you know, I just received a text from him yesterday. And there's a powerful message and a powerful narrative and a story and an understanding behind this simple case. And he's gone off and we just talked on the by text yesterday as he's driving back to his state with his wife or flying back and I'm gonna see him in a month or two. It really shows you the lack of understanding of what this medication is in our culture. The number of people being harmed by that lack of understanding and the fact that, you know, uh, as a physician, you have to take the medication, you have to put aside all of the social, cultural, moral, uh, sort of uh, impositions on what, what you're trying to do and really look at the data, look at the science, and then take your clinical experience and do the best thing for the patient. Here's a patient that was severely addicted to opiates. He was in severe pain, very poor quality of life, otherwise extremely healthy, and we just basically handed him his life back. And the way we did it, there was no magic in what I did here. The way we did it is we took a medication, which I have a lot of experience with. We understand the indications for this medication. We ignore, ignore all of the social, cultural attitudes that are negative or misguided or just simply wrong about this medication. We educated the patient about this medication. We utilized the medication and the patient has found symptomatic relief 
which will translate into so, so much, 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 much more. And I want everyone to meditate on this and proceed from there that A, this is a very powerful medication used in the right setting. B, one of those settings is for chronic pain patients. On the other side of it, think about the thousands and thousands and thousands of lives affected in quality, additional illnesses, which we call comorbidity, and the deaths occurring from opiate abuse in our country because we do have a solution. We do have multiple solutions. We're just not utilizing them. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, for the related videos to this video, which is what is buprenorphine a powerful tool and does Suboxone help with pain, please click on the links to my left. Have a great day.